Hey guys, Aaron here. Today we're going to be replacing the blower motor resistor and the blower motor resistor connector on the Chevrolet Colorado. Now, this actually happens to be a very common issue with these Colorados or GMC Canyons and actually the Chevrolet SSR shares the same parts as well. Now, what happens with this vehicle is when you have um, the blow motor on speeds one, two, and three, it works okay for about a minute or so, and then the air shuts off, the blow motor shuts off, and about a minute later, it'll regain power and start working again. And um, GM has actually released a TSB, a techni technician service bulletin regarding this issue, and they actually contribute it to a poor connection between the connector of the blower motor resistor and the blower motor resistor itself. So Dorman actually came out with a really nice kit to replace the blower motor resistor and the harness, and all you have to do is tap the new harness into the old harness, and that fixes the issue. However, this has already had that treatment done, and I'd say about two years ago, this particular vehicle has had a new harness in it and the same problem is occurring. So we're gonna actually put in another updated harness, which is a little bit different than the old one, and install a blower motor resistor to remedy that issue. Also make sure to check out the TSB in the link, which further explains the direct cause of this, this issue and the proper way GM wants you to solve it. Now, before we begin, let's go over the tools you're gonna to need to get the job done. All right, so we're gonna need a quarter inch ratchet with a 5.5 or 7 30 seconds socket, um, some electrical crimpers, some electrical strippers, uh, some electrical tape, just to keep the wires together, and then a heat source. I'm using just a heat gun, I recommend a heat gun, but if you have a torch or a lighter or anything like that, just to uh, melt the uh, butt connectors, that, that works best. Now nine out of 10 times, what you'll find is when you take off the connector from the blower motor resistor, one or two of the terminals are gonna be burnt um, pretty badly. You might see that the plastic around that terminal is damaged as well. I've done this repair a couple times and I've actually found, um, even in this case, where the vehicle was repaired from the TSB, um, an aftermarket connector is in there and it keeps happening again. This is actually a very, very common issue. Now the blower motor resistor is located directly underneath the glove box and what you'll see is there's actually um, a wiring harness that kind of is underneath here and you can see from someone has tried to make this repair before simply just take your finger down and pull off the connector and that's very common see how that one terminal right there is burnt and the plastic is discolored before we're gonna be replacing the blower motor resistor itself, I'm gonna actually replace the connector. Now it's very, very important that you follow each lead um, and connect them to the correct wires. As you can see, each lead is labeled uh, A, B, C, and D. Now as you can see, our aftermarket harness that has been installed does not have the same color um, wires as the OEM factory harness. So what I went ahead and did is uh, wrote down A, B, C, and D for our terminal numbers and then the color that corresponds with that terminal. Now at this time let's take our new harness and prep it for um, installing. Dorman actually really supplies some nice butt connectors um, with our new connector. They do have heat shrinking over them and when you use the heat shrink you'll see an adhesive actually melts to the wire itself creating a wire tight connection now this is not the best type of connector to use if you do feel like you have a better type of connector or um, soldering you know is always probably the best method if you feel like you're a pretty good solder guy and you can get the job done then I really suggest using that method um, but I, I simply do not really good at soldering, so I'm just going to use uh, what's supplied to me now. Um, I'm going to be replacing the A terminal first, which is tan, and then uh, move to the B terminal, which is blue. Now I went ahead and got all the connectors on, and uh, they seem to be pretty tight. Before I'm going to melt these connections, Go ahead and just give every little connector just a little tug to see that your crimp um, is pretty good and that there's no looseness. You definitely don't want these coming apart. Um, you will see if they do start to come apart later down the road, it's going to get really hot in here and uh, kind of like our connector was. These appear to be pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
melt these connections down. I really would stress that uh, using a proper heat gun is the best way to go. However, if you have a torch or you know uh, a lighter even works, that, that does work too. You just gotta be careful not to melt the, or burn the surrounding insulation on the wires. As it melts, you'll actually see the connector itself become a little bit more translucent um, and really snug around the wire, creating a good wire tight seal. Now just to keep the wires together, I like to take a little bit of electrical tape and wrap them tightly. That way they just throw it together and they don't get snagged on anything. Now that we've gotten our um, new connector finally installed and ready to go, the last thing to do is going to be to replace the blower motor connector or blower motor itself. Now uh, you could either use a 5.5 millimeter socket or a 7.30 seconds, and there's just two screws, and it simply pops right out. Last thing to do is simply plug it in. It should go in nice and tight. Once you're done there, go ahead and put your wiring back in its loom, which is located right here. Kind of tuck it out of the way if necessary, just to make sure that um, nobody kicks it and nothing happens. All right, so now that we have everything put back together and installed correctly, next thing to do, of course, is to test the operation of the blower motor resistor itself, making sure the fan works in all fan speeds. And it does. So I hope this video has helped you guys out. If it has, please like and subscribe. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave something in the comment section, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.